I, I have much to say. <laughs> hey guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Caprice. I love to read, I love fantasy, I love Harry Potter, but I've never read it until now. If any of you wanna guess what my Potter house is, People have asked me before, why haven't you read Harry Potter if you love to read so much? I have never heard a negative thing about Harry Potter. It has just been beloved by many. So I just wanted to always keep it on the shelf for the day when times got bad or I just needed a guaranteed good read. I was just keeping that as my safety net. What happened is now I'm 24 years old and I've never read it and I just feel like I've missed out. What was I waiting for? I have no idea. Now I've just been depriving myself of the childhood I could have had with Harry Potter. I knew once I finished it, I could never read it for the first time again, and I wanted to keep that in the back of my head. I don't know. This is actually gonna cover the first four books. I'm currently reading the fifth, I just started it. I was 11 when I saw it in theaters. I don't remember it. <laughs> I've seen Prisoner of Azkaban the most, I don't know why. Well, it's the best. At the end of the fourth book, I texted my husband Hunter and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that Professor Moody was a bad guy, and then he wasn't, it was just someone else pretending to be him. So I feel like I'm going through this all for the first time because I kind of actually am. What I love so much that JK Rowling does so well is that we grow up with Harry Potter seamlessly. And I thought there would be like a definite difference in the writing style as he gets older. In the one I'm reading right now, he's 15 years old, where in this one, in the first book, he was 11 years old. And I thought that there would be kind of a big difference, but the writing has been consistent, but also you have seen Harry Potter change and grow in the way that he perceives everything. I played Hogwarts Legacy, finished it, and I'm shocked by the amount of things that Harry Potter in the fifth book, like he's just learning about the, oh gosh, What's the, what's the spell where you like, <sighs> and you're like invisible to people? I'm still not sure how to take Professor Snape. I know he will kill Dumbledore. And for, th for that alone, I will never forgive him. So I don't know what his redemption arc exactly is. And I also know he's in love with Lily. I don't know what he's doing playing both sides. He was a Death Eater. Reading the first book, just like hated the Dursleys so much more because they are so freaking annoying and they're terrible people and it really doesn't make sense. I don't know why they hate wizards so much. I wish everything awful to happen to him. When he gets called to Hogwarts, I was actually surprised how chill Harry Potter was just like going through everything, going through nine and three quarters, doing all this jazz that he's never done before. And he was just chilling. He was just going through diagonally. <laughs> I think I loved Daniel Radcliffe in that moment so much more because he captured Harry Potter so well. I always thought like Harry just seems like a bland character and to me just seeing his inner thoughts and inner dialogue. Oh, he's just like an 11 year old boy. Just, oh, so I'm getting hot. He's just kind of accepting of any adventure because of the life that he's lived. He really has been a boy who lived, who had his parents die and the crappy life he has. Like, of course he's just, he'll go on any adventure because he wants to get out of his boring life. I actually don't know the first movie that well. So I was pretty sure I knew who like Voldemort's worker was. And I was like, I think it's Quirrell. I think it's the dark arts teacher. At this point, after reading four books, I'm like Dumbledore. <laughs> Like this, this keeps happening. I think Dumbledore is like, oh, you're only gonna last a year, perfect. When that all happened, it was pretty intense. Harry did a great job. He was just like, okay, we got this. Uh, the Sorcerer's Stone, that was a whole mystery vibe. It's kind of exactly what I thought it would be. The world building was incredible. JK Rowling, I think, is so confident in this world that you could ask her any question that isn't even in the books and she would know. To all of us, she has created something real and she has created a world beyond any other book I've ever read. And it's so entertaining, it's wonderful, it's magical, and I love the cozy feel that I get when reading this book. Then we have the second book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So for me, I think one and two were kind of just like both like kind of introductory. Also, I was shocked at how much Hermione's not in the first book. I kept thinking that she'd come back and then she, just was not that prevalent. They weren't really friends. Honestly, they didn't really even like Hermione, but in the second book, that's when we kind of get to know her more. That's when I really didn't like Professor Snape. He's really frustrating. He's really annoying. I honestly, <laughs> I cried when they cleared Hagrid's name. That was just a moment of, uh, 
just Hagrid backing up Hermione when Draco called her mudblood. Harry has found family, a home in Hogwarts and with wizards. What makes me love this book so much, it does feel like coming home. These people in this book, they're consistent and they're loving and they're, they're not afraid. And Harry Potter just being maybe the underwhelming character that he is, he's a hero and he's a good person. And I think I fell more in love with him in the fourth book especially. The first and second I was like, oh, these are so great. I totally get the hype. The third, I was hooked. <laughs> I was hooked. Also, I just hate Draco. He's the worst. He bothers me so much. And I just love how junior high it is. Also, can we talk about Jenny? Jenny is so cute in these books. I don't like her in the movies for valid reasons. I actually love, you know, she has such a little crush on Harry Potter and it's so cute and he's completely oblivious. Also, the fact that Jenny was the person who like snuck the journal out and gave it to Harry, that was crazy. Did not see that coming at all, actually. This is kind of like, also, we're getting started. And the third book, I love the third book. It was so freaking good. I was excited to read it. The other two were just like comforting reads. The third one was, oh, I wanna read this book, especially when Sirius comes. And at first I was like, wait, I thought Sirius was a good guy, but he was seemingly trying to kill Harry Potter. No, it was the rat. I was like, wait, what's happening with the rat? <laughs> when they're in the shrieking shack, that was crazy. The Whomping Willow and the spiders and the flying cars. It's just so good and I think the movies did a great job. I think the first thing that I've noticed when reading these books is nothing's really surprised me because ultimately everything seems to be in line. Like the whole plots, nothing's really deflected from the main plot line. Everything seems to be true and canon that's happened in the movies that I've read so far. But yeah, when freaking... <laughs> when Sirius Black was the dog and he's an, I forgot what that word is, but an M starts with an A. Also, I hate Wormtail so much, the little stupid Scabbers rat. It made me kind of hold a grudge against Ron because I was like, why would you hold on to that stupid thing? But Scabbers got away as his rat form and it just made me really angry. And also the image of Professor Snape's body floating out of the shrieking shack because he had passed out and they were just like using magic to carry him. I'm like, what? As we're entering the end of the third book, they haven't even messed with time. They haven't even gotten back in time yet. And I feel like in the movie, it is more prevalent. Like that's a huge plot point and there's a lot, you know, she punches Draco. There's a lot of things that weren't in the book because it went more quick paced. In cinema, the movie was perfect that way in book form. You know, no one wants to read the same thing over and over. So I was actually scared because Sirius was going to be like, was he gonna be killed? Was he even gonna go back to Azkaban or were they gonna kill him? But anyways, I hated Snape and he was gonna ruin Sirius Black life. You know, they saved Buckbeak and they like went to get Sirius and that was such a good moment. And when Sirius was like, I'm your godfather. Okay, that threw me for a loop because Harry Potter like hated Sirius because he believed that potentially he was the one that killed his parents. And I was like, no, wait, no, Harry, don't hate him. I think he's a good guy. And But we're also all discovering this together. When Sirius Black, his godfather, invites him to live with him. Oh, that just made me want to cry. It's so sweet. I love Sirius Black. I love him so much. One thing t that I've noted watching the movies and then reading the books is that they've made people, Sirius Black was a little bit more greasier, well Snape especially was more greasier, kind of more gross in the movie. He's just more stale, I guess. I love how we get to know characters, we get to know the world the first couple books. And then in the fourth book we introduce the villain. Absolutely introduce Voldemort. The fourth book was huge. I was shocked at how not bored I was. Just, you know, the fair, the Quidditch matches, and I could see it perfectly in my head. I could see all the tense and everything, and just seeing it slowly build up to the climax, and I didn't realize how long it took Harry to actually do all the challenges for the Goblet of Fire. Also, who put his name in the cup? I was so at first I was like, wait, was it Dumbledore? Did Dumbledore put his name in the cup? And then you find out, no, it was likely someone who wanted to kill him. And then he's writing a series and Sirius is like, oh, watch your back. Also, Harry's a hero, just in all the challenges, like helping out Cedric and also helping that one girl. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what's her name? Also, the whole conversation with Moni Myrtle was just exactly how I pictured it would go. And with the screeching egg. Fred and George, I really like them. I feel like they're more in the books than they are in the movies. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to rewatch the movies. Ron and Hermione have little moments here and there where I'm, I'm, I can see their tension. But if I didn't know that Ron and Hermione were going to end up together, I would have thought for sure that it was going to be Hermione and Harry. But what makes these books so good is their innocence. 
how it doesn't rely on adult content to drag attention to it, to become popular. And that's why I love it so much is because I'm not reading it for anything but the love that I have for the characters and the interest I have in the plot. I'm honestly reading it because it's a good book and it's a good storyline and I want to know. When they grabbed the Goblet of Fire, Cedric and Harry, when they grabbed the Goblet of Fire together and it was a port key, I was stunned. I was like, oh gosh, I'm pretty sure this is where Cedric dies. Um, Cedric immediately dies. Holy Hannah's, I wasn't prepared for that. I felt so sad because it has been pretty lighthearted this whole time. And now the fourth, we're starting to get more dark. This is where everything starts to happen. Um, Voldemort's scary as frick because he has red eyes and he's snake-like, ew. Wormtail just cuts off his hand. Was not expecting that, it's just this bleeding stub. And it goes into this little mixture of stuff and baby Voldemort and ew, gross. I did not expect them to duel. I was actually worried for Harry's life, but of course I know he doesn't die. For me, I cried <laughs> when Cedric came as a spirit out of Voldemort's wand. Cedric is like, please take my body back to my parents. What makes Harry so amazing is that he told him he would and he actually goes back and he does it. He takes Cedric's body, even when his life is on the line, Harry Potter well could have died too. I love that Cedric's parents came and thanked Harry Potter and he tried to give the winnings to them, but they wouldn't take it. This is when it sets where like, okay, this is real now. People are dying now and this isn't just everything's right at the end. Oh look, your, your house wins. The house cup. Everything's all right. The bag. It's like, no, this is, this is more than a house cup. First couple books, it was all about the house cup. I especially love seeing Harry Potter's trauma. You know, he didn't want to talk about what happened and Dumbledore made him, but I understand why Dumbledore was like, Harry, you need to tell me now. Also, can we talk about dreamless sleep potion. I want some of that because sometimes I just need to sleep and not drink. But Harry just not wanting to talk about it, but having the support and just having his hospital bed surrounded by people he loves and cares for. And Mrs. Weasley, I love her so much. She is probably one of my favorite characters just because she is the mother figure for Harry Potter. Just lovely to see a character that is just real how Ron's parents aren't rich, and I also like how that's talked about pretty frequently because a lot of us could relate. I mean, I wasn't raised in a very wealthy home, and I think it could be hard when you're comparing yourself to other people and possessions, but you see that Ron is rich among other things. He has an amazing family and amazing friends. Also, Ron and Hermione fighting over the cat and rap in the third book was hilarious. Seeing Harry Potter truly become scarred is grieving the loss of seeing Cedric continuously grieving his parents because he didn't even know them. He just has a hard time because he's the boy who lived. And I like seeing that he is the chosen one and what that looks like for him because he's not always popular. Also, the Slytherins suck. I did not realize that it's not just Draco and his two buddies. The Slytherin in general, like Harry Potter had a lot of rude people, especially when people didn't believe him about the Goblet of Fire. He's not just a perfect boy who everyone loves him. He goes through challenges that every teenager goes through and more which is why it's so sad that he had to see someone die. He's the boy who is always in the middle of trouble, but I liked seeing his inner thoughts, his kind of working through his grief and trauma going through the Goblet of Fire. I like that that was really focused on. Also, I don't know why he can't just go home and live with Sirius Black. Why? Why does he have to go to the Dursleys every time? Hagrid's an amazing character. He was great. Some differences I loved so much. JK Rowling is an incredible writer because she has us envision everything, but she doesn't waste our time. I never feel like I am reading something where I say to myself, hmm, that was really long and I feel bored. I'm never bored. Yeah, Winky and Bertha. There's definitely some added like things in this book with that. <laughs> things like Harry giving Fred and George his goblet winnings. That was so cute and he like wants them to start their dreams. But one of my favorite parts so far that I'm like, oh, this is definitely a different, is like Hermione, I feel, is less okay, she is a know-it-all and it's very apparent. Sometimes Hermione really annoys me. I also love that she wanted revenge from Rita Skeeta. But she just holds up a can on the train. She's like, here she is, she won't do it again. <laughs> There's no way. Oh yeah, Harry starts to like Cho Chang. Now that Cedric's gone, poor girl. Ultimately, my predictions, obviously I know bits and pieces. The whole Professor Moody thing threw me for a loop because I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Like it, Professor Moody, he's a bad guy and I liked him so much. No, that was actually someone else. And still he fooled me because I thought he was a good guy when he gave him like the Marauders map. A little bit painful for me to go through like the five stages of grief with that one. Ultimately, Harry Potter goes home and I'm thinking, oh, 
wh why is he just like going home to the Dursleys? He just had a duel with Voldemort, the one who shall not be named, and here he is just going home. Like, doesn't Voldemort know exactly where he is? Like, wouldn't he know the port key took him exactly where he was? I just have questions. Like, does Voldemort have... I know he's kind of like a baby. <laughs> he hasn't been able to use his full powers and he's still growing, getting stronger powers. I'm just worried for Harry Potter's life. I'm interested to how Snape has anything to do with this and the Malfoys. I don't trust the Malfoys at all. What is the repercussions for the people who showed up to Voldemort as Death Eaters? Like, like, are they gonna be punished or anything? I'm a little bit nervous for Hogwarts. Maybe we should be taking this kind of seriously and everyone not believing that Voldemort's back. A little scary. Ultimately, I just love it. <laughs> I love it so much and I love Harry Potter, love the little tender moments we get and it's more than just a book. It's just, it's definitely lived up to the hype for me and I'm really excited to keep on reading even though they're freaking huge so it's gonna take me a long while but I'm excited to talk to you guys about it more. Bye! <laughs>